Uh, okay, good good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am uh, Dr. Mohammed Belawi. I'm a neurology resident uh, at Prince Sultan Medical Military City in Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. Uh, today, I'm gonna present an, uh, an research uh, was done uh, in a title of Effective and Educational Intervention on Knowledge and Perception of Individuals at Risk for Stroke in Tabuk, Saudi Arabia. Uh, this study was done uh, on 2017-18. Uh, uh, so we will start uh, with our introduction. Uh, uh, several studies have demonstrated poor knowledge of stroke and its effects among individuals at risk for, and uh, at risk for stroke. So there was really needs for educational programs to raise awareness uh, among people who are at risk for stroke. Uh, so uh, this study uh, was aiming to uh, raise the awareness and education to the people who are at risk for stroke. Uh, our research question was, uh, in the BICO style, uh, uh, we started our research question with, does educational intervention on symptoms and risk factors uh, of stroke among high-risk individuals for stroke increase their level of awareness? So our target population was uh, people who are at risk for stroke. Uh, our intervention was health education and stroke warning signs and risk factors. And we compared it to the pre-intervention knowledge and perception of uh, participants. Uh, and our outcome was, and our goal was to increase their level of awareness. Um, so our objectives uh, in this study was uh, assessing the awareness of stroke, its warning signs, warning signs and risk factors in individuals at risk for stroke. Uh, also assess the effect of educational program on knowledge and perception of these individuals. Also to improve the knowledge and awareness of stroke among individuals at risk. Uh, so our methodology was, uh, our design study was quite experimental, one group pre-post intervention. Uh, our target population was uh, people who uh, had uh, more risk to have a stroke uh, in Tabuk, mainly in Saudi Arabia. So uh, we determined those population by using a stroke risk quiz, uh, which was uh, produced by the American Heart Association and the American Stroke Association. Uh, so uh, we targeted uh, the people who were in the medical clinics and uh, King uh, Salman Armed Forces Hospital who were waiting in the waiting area. So we started uh, to triage the patients uh, by the, asking them to uh, their consent with the stroke risk quiz. So um, any patients who had uh, any risk factors like blood pressure or atrial fibrillation or high uh, or diabetes or dyslipidemia, they were candidates or having risk factors for having a stroke. So we did this quiz. Uh, any participant who had more points in the high risk column, which was uh, if he had yes, uh, the, more than the lower risk column, were considered potential candidates for the study. Uh, our data collectors did this stroke risk assessment. Uh, target population were uh, determined at the triage nursing room in the medical clinics uh, that was in the King uh, Salman Armed Force Hospital. Uh, participants were chosen by uh, random sampling. Uh, this was done over 12 weeks uh, duration from December 2017 to February 2020. Sorry, to February 2018. Uh, so then after that, uh, after, um, after agreeing of the participant to participate in the study, uh, we ask them uh, instead of waiting in the waiting area to come to the health education clinic, uh, which is uh, next door to the medical clinics, which is the cardiology and the neurology and other medical specialties. Uh, and uh, in this clinic, uh, there was a trained health educator uh, was uh, in this clinic and these clinics. Uh, so we started uh, to assist uh, those participants to assess their perception of stroke and knowledge of symptoms and risk factors by using a centralized questionnaire uh, to establish a baseline knowledge if they know anything about stroke or if they don't know. Uh, this uh, was followed by an educational material after this questionnaire. We started our session by questionnaire, then uh, educational material was delivered to those uh, participants over a period of five to seven minutes by a trained educator. Uh, this educational material was taken from the Saudi Stroke Association. Uh, 
and uh, it was also a face to face uh, interaction with those participants and it was also associating with uh, nine, nine, 99 seconds of uh, video uh, explaining the stroke uh, symptoms and uh, signs to uh, usual people also we gave them at the end of the session booklet uh, as a handout um, our main principal message is to those uh, participants was to deliver to them uh, the warning symptoms of stroke, which was FAST, which is stand for uh, face, arm, speech. Uh, test means face dropping, arm weakness, speech. And we have, uh, fortunately, we had uh, an Arabic version for that uh, word. Um, so our uh, questionnaire, uh, uh, after the education, after the education, we made also a test on those uh, participants uh, after the educational material was done with the same questionnaire was uh, done in the period of the intervention. <clears throat> uh, our questionnaire uh, data was collected using a standardized questionnaire with options for multiple responses and open-ended questions. Uh, the questionnaire was adapted from a previous study done in Uganda. Uh, we made a lot, some modifications uh, on this uh, questionnaire uh, for uh, like translating it to the Arabic version. Uh, and we made a pilot study uh, to test the validity of the Arabic version of the questionnaire, which was done in uh, 20 candidates of bilingual uh, candidates. The questionnaire covered uh, multiple uh, parts, which covered the social demographic characteristics and uh, also covered the perception of stroke, uh, knowledge of stroke warning signs and risk factors, a response of, uh, of participant to a stroke event if they had uh, some of their relatives who had uh, stroke, what they should do, and their sources of information about the stroke, uh, barrier to the intervention. Uh, the knowledge of stroke warning signs was categorized based on the numbers of stroke warning signs. Any person who uh, was capable to name or to mention five to 10 stroke warning signs were considered good knowledge, to have good knowledge period to the intervention. And uh, two to four warning signs or uh, risk factors were considered to have intermediate or fair knowledge. And those who uh, identified only one symptom or warning sign of the stroke considered to have poor knowledge, and they were our target in this study. Uh, we use the same thing with the risk factors. If they can name or mention five risk factors, that means they have good knowledge. If they could only mention two risk factors, that means that they have fair knowledge. And the same applies with the one risk factor, so that they, they have only poor knowledge. Uh, the study setting, uh, this study was done in King Salman Air Force Hospital uh, around the family medicine clinic, diabetes clinic, neurology, cardiology, and all other medical specialty clinics uh, in Tabuk City in Saudi Arabia. Uh, there was also a separate room for health education clinic, which were uh, uh, used to uh, deliver this educational program and to do this study. A written consent uh, to participant uh, was taken. Uh, there was no any conflict of interest or budget uh, or funding to this study. Our results, uh, as you can see, the social demographic characteristic, uh, we had 313 participants in the study over the 12 weeks period who accepted to participate in this study. Most of them were, about 51% of them were in the age between 20 to 39 years of age, uh, who had uh, some of the risk factors like diabetes or uh, hypertension or smoking or other things, other medical conditions. Um, we had the gender who were uh, almost equal uh, between the male and females. Um, and education, most of our participants were educated uh, with uh, college and above of about 55% of them and most of our participants were married. Our first uh, part in the questionnaire was to assess uh, the definition of stroke, what the meaning of stroke means to the participant. About 63% uh, of uh, the participants were capable period to the intervention to 
uh, to define the stroke uh, as uh, loss frame functions because of disturbance and blood flow. Uh, this uh, percent, percentage was improved, really improved after the intervention uh, to reach 97%. And uh, there was other uh, people who chose, I don't know the, what is the definition of stroke and what is the meaning of stroke about, was about 19% or 20% almost uh, after, uh, before the intervention. And some others, uh, they choose other definitions. Uh, this is the first part of the questionnaire period and after the uh, intervention or with the educational program. Uh, then we went to the warning symptoms or what uh, to the what uh, of the stroke. Our target uh, or principal message is to deliver to them uh, fast, which means uh, in Arabic, agile, the same uh, monomic to the, it in Arabic. Um, so uh, before the intervention, uh, about 34% uh, say yes, they know stroke symptoms, only 34%. And after, before 34%, uh, about 65% say that they don't know uh, any stroke symptoms or uh, warning symptoms. After the intervention, this uh, percentage improved significantly with about 98% who uh, were capable to name at least one new, uh, at least one uh, stroke symptoms. Uh, so as you can see that uh, most of the people uh, after the intervention okay, was capable to identify the fast minomic face dropping arm or uh, weakness or one of the side of the body weakness, speech difficulties and the other uh, symptoms. As we can see here, pre-intervention and post-intervention, you can see that uh, uh, the post-intervention significant improvement in uh, about 98% in their uh, perception and their knowledge about symptoms of stroke and about 86% uh, in the next symptom and about 94% in the uh, speech difficulty symptom, which were significant uh, uh, and showed some really good improvements. Uh, then we, uh, the other part in the questionnaire or the other part of the education material was the risk factors. Uh, we ask our participant if you, do you know any uh, stroke risk factors? Most of them said um, uh, no, which about 85% uh, they said no, and 41% uh, said yes, they know some of the risk factors. Uh, from the people who said yes before the intervention, uh, about most of them, they mentioned uh, blood pressure or hypertension, uh, high blood pressure or hypertension is the, one of the most uh, common risk factors uh, to cause a stroke, which they were right about, uh, about it. As we know, the stroke, the most common risk factors for stroke is high, uh, high blood pressure or hypertension, and which uh, also improved after the intervention, after the educational material was delivered to them uh, by our health educators uh, to reach 86%. And same applies for the others like diabetes and uh, or stress and obesity and smoking. Um, we can see that only 13% mentioned that it is uh, one of the risk factors period to the intervention and 56% mentioned 52, 52% mentioned uh, after uh, intervention mentioned it is a risk factor the smoking. Others, uh, they mentioned some cultural beliefs as a risk factors like uh, cold weather or uh, uh, sunstroke or uh, lack of drinking water, they think that it can cause a uh, stroke. Uh, after intervention, uh, they change their beliefs uh, for these uh, risk factors. Uh, perception of stroke, we uh, also tested our people if they, uh, if, if they ever thought about having a stroke. Have you, have you thought about a stroke before ever? Most of them uh, said no. And uh, the possibility of having a stroke in your lifetime also, you can see that uh, most of them had a uh, low chance uh, about, uh, they choose that uh, the choice of uh, about low chance, 56%, even though they are at risk, that means that they are not aware or about the risk of having a stroke, about the risk of having a stroke. So we really wanted to uh, educate them that they are at risk 
for stroke. So to change their uh, lifestyle and to, to take care of their, uh, their selves. So this uh, slide can show to us that our, most of our participants, uh, they never thought about uh, having a stroke in their lifetime or uh, if they thought about it, they think about it in low chance that they will have a stroke, even though they are having like diabetes, high blood pressure or uh, atrial fibrillation, such uh, medical conditions. Um, so we ask our patients is, uh, do you think that stroke is preventable condition? Um, most of them answered uh, yes, as you can see about 60% of them, which is the right answer and which was improved after the intervention. And we also ask our participant, can you, can a person have a stroke more than once? Also, uh, they mentioned, uh, as you can see that the results, they mentioned yes, mo uh, most of them. Uh, so we tested also uh, our participant reaction to a stroke event. If any, uh, if you, if any fam family member close to you or anything, happened uh, that you think that there is a stroke event, what you will do, most of them, they choose the right answer, which is calling for ambulance. So because of the part of the principal message is fast, uh, is time, the last uh, letter T, uh, time to call ambulance or time to come to the, uh, to the hospital. Because as we know that acute management in this uh, situations is really, uh, uh, can make a, a huge difference in their lifetime and their life uh, uh, if we intervene in the first few uh, the golden hours we can save their uh, lives and we can also uh, save them from uh, devastating uh, complications of stroke our limitations in this study uh, uh, despite training both our educators we had only two educators to deliver the education to the participant uh, there may have been uh, differences in the methods adopted between uh, the two uh, indicators. So we wanted to eliminate this bias. We had to use two indicators only from both genders uh, in order to respect also the religious and cultural passions of our participants. Uh, we gave them a lecture period to the, uh, to the study to have a systematic way to deliver these uh, informations to our participant to eliminate any differences in the delivering the uh, um, educational material to them. Um, another way uh, that the long-term effect of our educational intervention was not measured in the study uh, because um, we tried in the pilot study, we tried to do a, a pre-intervention, a pre-assessment and post-assessment uh, immediately and 30 days after uh, intervention, we had to call them. But the, in the pilot study, we failed to, uh, to, uh, to reach most of them. And some of them refused to give phone numbers and uh, for uh, assessing the long term of our education intervention. So we, uh, our goal was to educate them. So we chose to, uh, we had to, uh, to do it uh, pre and post intervention only in, in, in immediately. So a larger perspective studies would be required to assist uh, for their, uh, this outcome later on. Um, and the, uh, also our uh, elderly population uh, group were the least cooperative in our study despite the risk for stroke uh, because constant matters and family members uh, were reluctant to let them participate. And sometimes because uh, they were uh, not interested to, to participate uh, in, in this study. Uh, conclusion, uh, we conclude that educational contact by means of one-to-one -one interaction with the trained educators, video clips, uh, and handouts result in a significant improvement in understanding of stroke symptoms and risk factors at risk participants. Uh, it shows uh, the effectiveness of educational programs and raising public awareness. Um, also, similar uh, reform may be useful for raising public awareness of other health issues in our community like uh, diabetes, uh, smoking, uh, high blood pressure. We can use it in the same way. Um, thank you. Uh, these are our references. Thank you. Thank you.